<sighs> hey guys, welcome back to Bumby's Custom Bikes. Today is the day we're putting the turbo on the bike. Well, it's not going to go on today. There's a lot of steps. Um, today, we're going to do kind of just the getting everything ready and a little information. So, most of you do know what a turbo is, some of you don't. Um, if you don't, all it is is it's basically just a way to force more air into the engine. And the way it does that is the exhaust goes into this hole, spins the uh, turbine that's inside of the dark gray spot here, which then spins a compressor, which is in the light gray spot here, and forces compressed air out of this hole. That compressed air then goes into the intake of the engine. More air means more fuel, which means more boom, which means more power. There's obviously a lot more to it, but that's just a real rudimentary of how it works. Um, this is the wastegate. This just regulates how much pressure or boost the turbo can produce. If it starts exceeding what this wastegate is set at, it will open a little valve down here on the exhaust side and allow the exhaust to bypass the turbo altogether. So that's general parts of the turbo. When installing a turbo, there's some things you need to know. The turbo needs oil. So it has an oil feed line up here and that's how it's fed oil from the engine it needs an oil return so there's a hole here where the oil just gravity feeds out of so that's important to know because the turbo needs to be situated in this position so that that uh drain is as close to completely facing down as you can get it. now this is a gt25 turbo so it's based off of a, a nissan turbo Y'all can correct me in the comments. I'm sure I'm wrong. Um, and this specific turbo is water-cooled. So it's got ports for coolant that we're going to basically tap into the motorcycle's coolant, which is cool that this is a water-cooled motorcycle. We're going to tap into the coolant on this and run coolant through it to keep it cool. So first thing first, when you get a turbo, um, and th this is kind of uncharted territory. Not a lot of people turbo motorcycles. But... The first thing you want to do is you want to just look at the turbo, look at the bike. And this is the same with putting them on a car. Um, if the car is not originally designed with a turbo, you kind of have to figure out where is it going to go. Um, and there's a couple different aspects that play into that. You need to be able to get the exhaust to it. And then you need to be able to get the air to the intake. That's a little bit easier because they have silicone adapters and all this and that. Um, on motorcycles, especially on the V-twins, the exhaust typically comes off on the same side as the intake. So that makes this a little easier. So in this instance, the turbo, I believe, is going to work really, really well living right about here. So we're going to clock it and move it around so that the exhaust flange is where we want it and that the um, outlet for the air is also where we want it. But I think if we have it here, we'll be able to run the outlet for the air right up and into the intake. Um, and then we'll be able to move the exhaust around to where we need it to get it to the exhaust flange. So that's just the real rudimentary basics for the turbo. Um, our buddy James is gonna come over today. He's a car guy, has messed with a lot of turbos. He's gonna help us out when he gets here. But uh, let's move over to the workbench and we'll get this clocked. We'll work on clocking the turbo. Okay, so we need to clock the turbo. And that's another term that we're gonna learn here. And all that means is we're gonna move the different housings around so that they end up where we want them. So the turbine housing, which is what you call it the hot side, the dark gray cast, um, we need to be able to spin that. And then we also need to be able to spin the compressor housing to get the inlet for the exhaust and the outlet for the air where we want it. That being said, we also need to move the core or the center housing so that it's situated where we need it as well. So with the feed facing straight up and the outlet facing straight down. The coolant passages, I mean, whatever. But we basically want it so that the inlet, the oil inlet, is at the 12 o'clock position. Each coolant passage will be at three and nine. And then the oil drain should always be at six. As close to six as you can get it. So all we need to do to clock it, we have to disconnect the wastegate. And then we need to loosen all of these bolts around the outside there. And then we should be able to move the housings freely. So let me get all these loosened and I'll show you. Now 
All right, we got all the bolts loose uh, and we got the wastegate off. Now you can see how this works. So this rod here is attached to a diaphragm inside of here with a spring in the middle. As this hose, which normally pulls vacuum, starts seeing that positive pressure, it forces that diaphragm shut, which then forces this rod open. And then if you see this, it opens that, which allows the exhaust gases that are coming in through here to bypass and come directly out of that hole and bypass the turbo altogether. So that lowers the boost. That's how you make sure you don't blow your engine up. But we got all the other bolts loose. So now, as you can see, she rotates freely. And that's what we're looking for. The core should also rotate freely. Oh, yeah. Now, this uh, housing has to come off. So we're going to take this uh, wastegate housing actually completely off. Because it's going to have to get moved once we move the turbine housing. Um, I'm going to be using these terms a lot to kind of describe what I'm talking about as far as the different parts of the turbo. So just for to show again, turbine, compressor, core. Oh, it's a little magnetic. Core. All right, so I got the turbine side clocked where I want it. I've got the core where I want it with the feet up top and the drain on the bottom. Now we just got to get the compressor where we want it. So, there she is. Well, there's the compressor. <laughs> Make sure we didn't mess with any of the blades. Well, that's pretty cool. We can see it open. But... That is the compressor there. It, you know, spins the air around and uh, compresses the air. Well, now we can put it back together. Be very careful uh, if that does happen. This was real stuck and then, you know, you saw it just kind of popped off. Be real careful with that because if you damage any of these blades, you can have some pretty, pretty bad consequences. Um, you know, this is going right into the intake of your engine. So if any of these blades break off or chipped or anything like that, they're going into your engine. And, you know, I don't think I need to tell you. That's not good. So let's get this back on. I know I want it pretty much 180 from the exhaust. Now, I don't think we're going to actually be able to achieve that just because of where the wastegate's going to have to go. So... We'll cock that just a little bit, and then we'll flip it over and put these bolts back in just to hold it in place. There goes a bolt. Um, and for this GT25 turbo, these are all 13 millimeter bolts. I go searching for that bolt. Now I'm just going to kind of put this side on just to sort of hold it in place so we don't have to worry about it falling off. And then there's two of these bands and then the bracket that the wastegate is on. So let's see where that wastegate's going to fit. Wastegate. I went ahead and took the hose off, but it'll just slide back on. Also, it's important to note that if the uh, the hose bar before that hose is facing the wrong way, you can turn this 180 degrees and it'll still fit. You might need a longer hose, but it'll fit and it'll work. So let's get that on there. And I think that's exactly what we're going to have to do. All right, so there's just 10 millimeters on these, uh, these two nuts here. <laughs> nuts. Sorry, I'm three year old. So take it, spin it 180, and drop it right back on. And put these nuts back in. Okay. Now let's see where she's gonna fit.
That is so close to perfect, it hurts. Man! <sighs> Not quite, though. Yeah, it's like if it had a little bit of a bend in it, it would be perfect, but it doesn't. See, it's just not quite fitting down there. But you know what? This is adjustable, so let's adjust that. Your, limit, your uh, options are, I don't want to say limitless, but a lot of different stuff you can do to make it work for your application. Also, you need to make sure that it fits on whatever you're trying to put it on too. So like, I may get this wastegate on here and it won't work on the bike because it's interfering with something. So all we're doing is we're adjusting the throw of this wastegate. So I just loosened the little jam nut there, and now I can uh, possibly make this work. I still don't think it's gonna though. Yeah. <sighs> All right, well, let's see what we got to do. All right, let's leave it there, and then we'll just adjust that to fit there. That's pretty close to where we want it. And we didn't change the core. All right, that'll work. All right, we finally got the turbo clocked. Uh, I'll admit, it took me a long time to get it right. There's just a lot that you have to uh, kind of figure out. So the hard thing for me with getting it clocked was I really wanted the compressor outlet vertical. Now I can kind of just go straight in to the intake here. Well, in doing so, you know, I had to clock the uh, the oil inlet in the in the drain, and get them uh, at twelve and, and six, which just threw the turbine side completely out of whack of where it needed to be. Um, I started having interference with the oil drain down here. Um, I started having issues with the wastegate. This was the big thing was finding where the wastegate's going to fit. But I finally got it all right. And there's no real one way to do it. It's going to all depend on your application, whether you're putting this on a motorcycle, whether you're doing it in a car. Clocking the turbo is all going to depend on your application and how you can make it fit. Um, unless it's like a plug and play. Some vehicles, some motorcycles have plug and play kits. Like um, 
Again, no affiliation. Trask Performance makes a kit for the Harley Sportsters that just bolts right up. I mean, there's no fabrication, nothing needed. It just bolts right up. Uh, they make a supercharger kit for the VTX, but it's like $5,000. So we're building it from scratch. But anyways, with everything clocked, this is where it kind of fits. And this is where I kind of like it, like right there. Uh, now, as you can see, my exhaust intake is gonna be right there. So the exhaust is kind of kind of stick out a little bit, but what I think I'm gonna do is kind of hug it underneath the turbo and then just barely kind of loop up into it and have the flange there. The only thing that's gonna be tricky about that is getting the turbo on and off after I take the exhaust off. So, but that's where it's gonna fit. That's where it's gonna work. And we're gonna make it work that way. So the next step is building your exhaust. And that's gonna be a separate video, I think. But we're getting started. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, probably gonna do this in a couple part sections, but I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. It's a little introduction to turbos and getting them clocked. Keep riding, friends.